All right, welcome to the show, Swarna Padilla. Thank you so much for appearing today. Can you tell the good folks out there a little bit about yourself, who you are, and what you do? Well, thanks for having me, Matt. Um, sure, I am a software engineer turned product marketer. Um, been in the industry for almost, uh, let's say, X number of years. I, I don't want to date myself. <laughs> Um, right yeah. now, I'm at HashiCorp. I've, I joined here about uh, less than five months ago, so I've been focused on developer marketing, so more about trying to translate the tech speak about what the product does instead of getting into the weeds of it, translating it to why should one care about learning about this product. Mm. So I, I do that for, um, I'm focused on that for all of the HashiCorp products. Yes, I'm I'm well acquainted with the HashiCorp products, uh, especially Terraform and Vault. They're kind of my jam, if you will. Uh, but that's that's a difficult transition going from writing software and understanding it at a functional level to explaining and promoting it out to the public. How how was that transition for you? Um, I guess the fact that I never really liked coding helped it. <laughs> Um, no, uh, about three or four years into my career, my husband pointed out that, yeah, I don't see you focusing on your engineering or being in a cube by yourself coding away, coding your life away. So why don't you consider other functions? And coincident at the same time, we happened to move to the US. So it's like, I'm going to use this break and pursue my MBA and see if that makes any difference. And uh, that gave me a good opportunity to look at accounting, finance, economics, management, and marketing. And I was like, yeah, marketing, especially product marketing in that um, aspect of it really intrigues me because it's like the perfect cusp of both of these functions, engineering and marketing, like talking to the customers and everyone. Yeah, it's interesting. I did a little product marketing in my previous uh, incarnation before I went out on my own. And now I just have to market myself. But product marketing was hard. It was It was hard to translate what the customer wants to what the people designing it can do and, and vice versa. Yeah. But uh, we're here to talk about your career trajectory, your transition. And I think many times in our career development, there's these sort of watershed moments where someone says something or gives advice solicited or unsolicited sometimes. And it just, it, it sets off a bell in your head. And you go, oh, I should do this other thing or I've been thinking about this all wrong. And it can happen more than once. So I'm curious, what's what's the best career advice you've ever received? And how did it alter your career trajectory? Sure. Um, there were three of those kind of moments um, in my throughout my career. The first one was definitely, I kind of categorized that as learning about myself, learning about teamwork, and learning about relationships. So the mm. first thing was more about myself. Um, the first piece of advice I got from one of my classmates in the business school was to never undermine myself. Um, because we were always in the discussion, especially as a woman in tech, I always used to uh, hesitate negotiating a compensation side package or negotiating a job title or negotiating a promotion cycle, any of those kind of things. And we were just having these conversations when he immediately pointed out saying, you know, you should not be undermining yourself or more importantly, do not let others define what and where you should stand in your career. Establish a path. Obviously, don't be unreasonable saying you have to be a CEO at the start of the career, which some of the folks ha have been. But at least for me, it was more like understanding where I wanted to go. And am I championing myself? Am I being a good advocate for myself? Speaking up for myself? Because standing up for others and speaking for others is a lot easier than when we have to do it for ourselves. So that has been a really good kind of eye-opening moment for me. Yeah. Um, and the second thing was about uh, teamwork and those kind of aspects where um, the executive director from my previous job, uh, she once just pointed out that, hey, in our team here, we don't really focus on being nice to each other. That kind of made me pause for a second. I was like, what are you talking about? And then she finished that sentence with, we are more focused on being kind to each other. What that means is it's not about not saying our uh, opinion or feedback or not sharing constructive criticism or any of those kind of things because the other person might get offended or they might their feelings might get hurt. But it, it was more about, is this the right thing to say to that person? If so, how can we say it in a way that they will take it positively and they will move in the right direction of getting stuff done rather than 
a whole another uh, tangent of getting feelings hurt and strained relationships and the, all that kind of jazz. So the understanding of the difference between being kind and being nice was extremely uh, eye-opening for me. For, for a long time, I kind of used to use interchangeably use those terms mm -hmm. uh, very often. And from then on, I'm like, yes, being nice is very different from being kind. Um, and the last piece was definitely about relationships. Um, this also came from um, one of the community members in my past jobs where he pointed out that, hey, jobs come and go, but it's the people that will stay forever. And what kind of translated to me in my head was, it's just different companies, different labels or different employers that we work for. But in the end, people remember how you make others feel. So it's what's more important is the quality of the relationship you maintain with them and not really uh, trying to be nice just because they're your coworker. Mm, right, right. Yeah, that there's there's a bunch of different common threads between <laughs> those three. But that I want to start with the don't undermine yourself, because I think a lot of people, at least in the tech industry, have this sort of imposter syndrome where they don't think they're good enough and they second guess themselves. So did you experience that a little bit? And, and what did you do to get over it? Did I? I still do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's a constant reminder, at least something that I constantly remind myself and also remind others that uh, we all have to get into the phase of when we are talking about ourselves or when we're trying to get things for ourselves, like negotiate um, anything for ourselves, we need to think of it as as if we're trying to do that for someone else. Like if I had to write a bio or a resume for a friend of mine, I would take a completely different approach than when I would have to do that for myself. Yeah. Um, as soon as I start writing for myself, at least for in my experience, I have always kind of assumed that, oh, everybody does this. Of course, what I do is not something profound or something great. So it's it, it bottled down to how I was, um, undervaluing my own accomplishments or not really focus on highlighting the work that I've done because I thought everybody else would do that. And if, if I were to write the same thing about someone else, I literally had a friend um, walk me through that exercise that look at your job for these three years, you work here, write about all the accomplishments as if Swarna was a completely different person. And if you were to write all the things that you would write about her, what would you do? And the things that I wrote about myself over there was just astonishing. I would never have written that if I were to do that for myself or if I had that kind of mindset. So um, it's the imposter syndrome is very real. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, it is very hard. I love that advice, though, of like kind of looking at yourself from outside and advocating as if you're someone else to a certain degree and you get a little better perspective and maybe even reaching out to somebody else and asking them how they would see you in that situation. Cause getting that outside perspective is really hard. Like that's, that's a tough one. It um, is. And with the whole self-assessments and everything going on in any organization, it becomes so much more important to make sure that we are being a true and a genuine champion and also genuine critique for ourselves. If we are not, accomplishing the things the way we have to, then we have to be honest about that. But if we are, we also have to highlight our successes. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not bragging if you actually did it <laughs> and you're proud of it. Yep. Yeah. It's just stating a fact. Right, right. And I really like the differentiation that you made between being nice and being kind, because I too tend to use those two terms kind of interchangeably, but I think you made a critical point you can be nice to someone and actually end up being unkind to them because maybe they needed that feedback to grow and get better. And Precisely. Yeah, if you're not telling them that, if you're not telling them what they actually need to hear, then you're doing them a disservice. You're, you're being unkind to them. Yep. Yeah, that was extremely important to know the value of teamwork. Um, I mean, especially when, whether you're a people manager or an individual contributor, if you're not sharing that, you're as you said, you're actually doing a disservice to the other person because with that feedback, they could have completely changed the way they learn or the way they function and they would have grown to a whole new heights as opposed to not hearing this kind of feedback from us. And right. th that's when um, kind of articulating the feedback becomes so much more important because words matter. Um, yeah. They have a really strong effect on people. So the 
words you choose have to be deliberate and you have to be very careful, but um, yes, being kind. Uh, now I know that being kind is not nearly the same as being nice. <laughs> That's a great distinction. And I think your last point about building relationships, that approach of being kind as opposed to being nice helps you build those relationships and make them more genuine and not just this on the face. I'm always being nice. You'll never see you'll never see me be otherwise that that makes the relationship feel less genuine to a certain degree. Exactly. And I think, as you said, that pretty much supports the um, the being kind versus being nice differentiation uh, supports the relationships aspect of it because now I have the possibility of having a long lasting and a true relationship with either coworkers or friends or anyone in the community. And they can trust me to always speak my mind in the sense that if I have something to say about, if I don't agree with their approach, or if I feel like there could be something better that we could be doing in a project or an initiative, they can always trust me to say that out to them. And if I don't think of it, obviously I will not say it, but if I have something to say, I should be able to say it in a way that does that helps the bigger project or initiative or whatever we're working, collaborating on. Right, right. Well, those are great points. I really appreciate you sharing that advice. I think it's gonna be really useful to people who are watching out there. Uh, but I wanna take time to say thank you so much, Swarna, for appearing on the daily check-in and and sharing this really interesting information. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to promote or or mention as we wrap up? Um, other than just continue being kind and continue with your weekly check-ins, I don't have anything. But hey, HashiConf is coming up in ten days, so <laughs> I'm psyched about it. And whenever this gets uh, aired on your YouTube channel, uh, whether it's before HashiConf or after, the videos will always be there to watch. So. Yeah, this should publish on Monday. So that'll be in time for people to get out there and get registered for HashiConf Digital. I'll be doing a lightning talk, and I know there's a ton of great content and a couple surprises that we're not allowed to talk about yet. I have no so. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So we oh, stay tuned for that. Thank you again, Swarna, for appearing on The Daily Check-In. Thank you for having me, Ned.